Nick, Brandon, you got anything else on there? 14? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 14. Oh, who that? Who that? Who that? Who that? How did you share it? I'll share it. How did you share both of them together? Hello, somebody. All right. Nobody on 14? Okay, let's run to 15. Let's run. Let's run to 15. Let's run to 15. Before I go to 15, 14, I think all the way to the end of the chapter 2, is talking about the approval and the disapproval. So I need to do that. It talks in 14, I think, I believe to the end of the, end of, uh, the chapter, I think it ends in verse 26. 14 through 26, it's talking about the approval and the disapproval. There were also, you could also, you could also call it like this, um, dealing with false teachers, people who teach us stuff that's not biblically based on what they think, how they feel, and all that stuff, based on that, all the way, I believe, to 26. So now watch number 15. 15 says, be diligent to present yourselves approved, watch this, approved to God. Not approved of God, approved to God. Does the King James say the same thing? Says approved to God? Yep. Yeah, okay, I want to make sure. I knew what I thought it was, but I want to make sure. I ain't always right. <laughs> he said approved to God. And that's the way he's saying that you, you have, you, you will get, be diligent. First of all, let's, let's break this down. 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 Break it down. This word diligent means to make every effort. To make every effort. I like the key, New King James, he says, <laughs> be diligent. Give every effort in the presence, in the presence. And to present yourself, right? not present, to present yourself approved to God. Give every effort, every effort, every fiber, every being of yourself to God's approval. Well, I want to stop right there for a moment. Notice he says to God's approval. He doesn't say to man's approval. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. He says to God's approval. So what he's asking said, he said, you give every effort to God's approval. You give every effort not to man's approval. Man is not going to always approve you. Mm. Man is not, I'm going to say it one more time. That's good. God, God is to God's approval, but man will not always approve you. And I want, I want, I want to say, man is not going to always approve you, and, is, and you don't even look for me to always approve you. <clears throat> because we get messed up because we want men, men's approval, people's approval of what we do for God. Everybody's not going to approve your work for the God. As long as you pleasing God, don't worry about what people say or do or think. Mm -hmm. Okay, come here, Jesus. Come here, Jesus. Come here, Jesus. Come here, Jesus. Now I'm going to push you, really. Watch this. Jesus, when he taught the, the, the people, everybody did not approve of him. Everybody that was not with him. Even though he preached the most to the people, there were scribes who didn't like him. There were Pharisees who did not like him. They wanted to kill him, put him away, because he was teaching something that was the truth and opposite of what they were teaching. And when you teach and read, approve, approve by God and teach scripture, as scripture says, everybody's not going to approve you. Why? Because you hit them what they said. Uh-huh. Can you talk to me? Actually, we went through this last week. Yeah. We ran into like two girls at Target. Uh -huh. And the main girl was talking about, well, there's some mother. Because... When God made the world, he had a wife. And 
that wife is our mother. And I said, <laughs> we have God, yeah. Jesus, uh -huh. and the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. No, no, we have a mother. <laughs> I said, no, we've always been taught you have God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. No, no, we have a mother. God was married, and that's the mother. <laughs> I wanted to say, well, just go to a Catholic church. But I didn't say that. And then go have a mother. I didn't say that. But I didn't say that. And I told her, because they, they were both back and forth. Yeah, they, they came from New Jersey. They were just back and forth and back and forth. And trying to argue about the Sabbath. And this and that. And pulling out the scriptures. And this, they were taking the scriptures and turning them around. And I'm like... That's not true. And I told her at the end, I was going to argue with her. I told her, you know, about my father, mm -hmm. my grandfather, and you. And I said, okay. we were taught this and this and this and this. You right. continue to, to believe the way you want to believe. Uh -huh. I will continue to believe the way mm -hmm. I've been taught. And then uh -huh. we just walk away. Yes, because yeah. there's no point of no. even trying to argue exactly. or state yeah. your case because... They don't want to hear it. No. So we just kind of walked off. Yes. But I've never heard that yeah, of a mother. We have never been taught no. about a mother. <laughs> you know, yes. maybe the Catholic Church, but not holding this. Exactly. We've never been taught no. about a mother. No. No. So exactly. we just walked off. I was talking about the weather, but once we went to Dairy Queen, I was done. <laughs>
You want me to tell you something? I'll tell you something. We're in the end time. That's what I told my mom. And well, since we're in the end time, there are stuff that's coming up. People are making up. That's not biblical. It's not scripture. And they're coming up with their own version of the Bible. Uh, and when we get to chapter 3, we all know we're going to be there short. There's a point in chapter 3, I'll just give you a synopsis. There's a chapter, part in chapter 3 that says, they will turn their ears from the truth. Okay. Watch this. Mm -hmm. And they will turn their ears to fiction and fables. We get that we that we that right, y'all. We get that right. And that's where we at because when we get to chapter 3, it's talking about the end time. It's talking about the end time. And, and, and it's going to describe exactly what you just said when you get to chapter 3. That's why I can't wait to get to chapter 3. Because this, this, that's real good to be on them bones. Yeah, yeah, chapter 3. Chapter 3, yeah, yeah. And that's where we at. We, we're in the end time. And we got people who are not listening to what Scripture is literally saying. It's going to their own Bibles, their own uh, teachings uh, that are not, not biblically based. And all this. It, it's, it, it's, we get into that because people are going to say, it's going to this where people are heaping to themselves. Engineers, that they all this We're going to have this. This is third chapter. I thought she said third chapter. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it, that's, that's, that's the day time we're in. Yeah, yeah. We're there. Yeah. We are there. Wow. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. It was. But it says, prove unto God. Because what you did was prove unto God. <laughs> what they, they were talking about was disapproved to God. <laughs> And, and they, so, huh? And they were rooted and grounded. They yeah. were ready for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because check that old oh, girl. You, you just said see. something. You just said something. Because it is very imperative that you know the Bible. The Bible says in Psalms 119 and 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart. Watch this. That I might not sin against you or thee. Yes. <laughs> I got the Bible in me to know it. I can't be hoodwinked, babbles, and tripped. Right. Right. Woo! Jesus. Say it to more to say, but I know what I know. And you can't get what I know from me because I know what I know. They're going to try. They're going to try. They're going to try. They're going to try. But I got too much in me. I got too much word, too much Holy Ghost in me to be here with the bamboos and tricked. Woo. We. Okay. What the rest of, oh, verse of 15. Uh, he says, a workman who does not need to be ashamed. Wow. Don't be ashamed. What you do for God. What you do for God. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. That's right. He says, watch this. He said, rightly dividing the word of truth. The word rightly means in the text means accurately dividing the word of truth. She uses the word, she said, twist it. Jalen, eisegesis. Eisegesis means twist the text. Take it from what it literally means. And Paul is telling Timothy, give every effort to, to approve of God. Not of man, but of God. And accurately, rightly dividing the word of truth or the word of God with your truth. Oh, we accurately, rightly dividing the word of truth. Because there's some words I was, I was reading today. Uh, one of my preacher friends sent me an email of a preacher. And he was talking about uh, studying scripture. And, and, and he was talking about you need to learn what some of the words mean in the text. Because if you don't know what the word means in the text, you can. You can Misunderstand the text. Yeah. Yeah. That's why people hear me asking questions in Bible study yeah. or, or, or Sunday morning, I ask the question to the text. Yeah. 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 <laughs> because you can't question the text. And then when he uses the word uh, ruin in the uh, NIV, the New Living Translation, what does it mean? How can this benefit me in understanding the text or the scripture when he says ruin? It means destruction. Cause I, I, I can get clarity of what it means when I say ruin, because when anything is ruined, it's destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Give every effort. Every effort. Now, Sister, Sister uh, uh, Brooks, you got the 
Who did they trace on this verse? Tra who tra trace on this verse? Uh, number 15, right? Okay. Yes. It says, work hard so God can approve you. Ooh, oh, stop, stop, stop. He says, work hard. I want to emphasize, he says, work hard. Continue. Work hard so God can approve you. Uh huh. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly explains the word of truth. Who correctly? I like that. Okay. Who correctly explains the word of truth? Mm -hmm. In other words, he'll he'll bring it down. Okay. <laughs> he'll make it plain. Because if we look at the life of Jesus, when he one day I, the Lord said, "Saying I'm, I'm a teacher on the life of Jesus." Because Jesus, in his days, he used parables. In other words, he broke it down in parables to where the people could understand. We used to never call it uh, 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 analogies. Uh, it's almost like because Jesus would use stories. Jesus, Jesus was a storyteller. Yeah. He talked about the, about the stones, yeah. uh, good ground, stony ground. And rocky ground, all that stuff. He, and he would explain them what he's talking about when he says that. Because they can grab, they, they know about rocks. But then he just explains about how the rock, or the heart, really, the rock, the rock was a heart. <laughs> and how it fell on stony ground and, 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 and was not productive and all that stuff. He broke it down. He told, gave these, these parables or 